What we're doing today is we're actually installing a carbon fiber steering wheel on a very good customer of ours car. So he's got an MK7 GTI, which is a Volkswagen Golf. He's chosen a carbon fiber steering wheel with Alcantara on the sides. We got that in for him. So if you visit our online shop, you can find any sort of steering wheel that you want. They're usually custom made if they're not on the shelf already and they take about two to three weeks. As you can see, it is actually uh, some of you don't believe us it is actually if you can see in there a genuine Volkswagen steering wheel when we get it modified with our supplier we can get anything done to it so for example this one as you can see is a lot thicker than usual so we've made sure that we got some sort of thumb imprint here so whenever you're racing down Hume Highway you know how it is so we always advise people to get the core unless they're actually modifying the entire thing in the sense of they want like an Alcantara airbag cover. With those things, it's personal preference. This is one of the best value for money, I'd say, because it does change the entire look and feel of your steering wheel. And it costs a lot less than buying an entire airbag assembly, buttons and everything. Minimizes any risk of anything not working for any reason. Step number one, put the steering wheel sideways. The cars with the stop start button, you will need to turn your steering wheel so that it's no longer locked and then disconnect your battery. So step number one is turn your steering wheel. Step number two is disconnect your battery. And we do that because we don't want to have any sort of facial reconstructions when the airbag pops in your face. So as a disclaimer, make sure your battery is disconnected before you do anything. I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate, a lot of opinions. I really don't care about your opinions. I always, for some reason, find it best to disconnect the positive terminal. I know a lot of people will say to do the negative. I don't know, on these cars, they've got some other shit connected to the negative and I don't really like messing with that. So I'm going to, unfortunately, have to put the camera down and disconnect the battery. So being scared of electricity, I've actually taken a little bit longer than I should have taking that terminal off. Um, so it's not touching the battery at the moment because you know science this is not conductive I'm pretty sure if you don't see any more videos next week you know what happened now we're on to step number three which is taking this airbag off so once you've turned the steering wheel on the back here which I'm not gonna be able to show you there's gonna be a small tab where you gotta put like a flathead screwdriver in there push it in tilt it it should pop out so fortunately as much as i want to make this into like a detailed how-to video i can't with one hand so let me try and set the camera up somewhere and i'll start working and let's see how we go so we test first beautiful so it shouldn't pop in our face we've got two tools so we've got an ice pick that is used in prison to shank people um, but we don't use it for that here we've got a stubby little screwdriver that's a flathead. Let's see which one ends up working best for us. I think this one's going to be the one. So I'm going to give it a shot first. So obviously, give yourself as much room as possible. Move the steering column and whatnot. So we're going to push this in. Fucking oath, boys. Fucking oath. Just popped out. So good. See what I mean? It just locked again. So you unlock your steering wheel. You're gonna turn it to the other side. Once I take it out, I'll show you guys what it is. It makes a lot more sense when you felt it personally than anything else. So what happens now is you just carefully take this out. There's a wire in here. I'm gonna show you as well in a second. This is the main plug. So that's got a white tab at the top here. So you gotta pull that tab out and then this comes out. Then this one has a small tab on here. It's on the inside where your cruise control settings are. You just put your finger in there and then just boop, out, done. So a tip for all of you. Basically, if you are attempting to do this, instead of taking the steering wheel off and sitting there, putting it between your lap and trying to take the surround off because this surround is literally held on by just pins that go into the actual 
uh, rubber of the steering wheel. Have to do this very carefully as to not break it. I always start off at the bottom. You'll feel it like come loose out of the rubber um, and then work your way around it. So this part should be the really the longest part of doing this whole install is this one. Another tool that you can use is a trim removal piece. So even though you just got to be very careful with how you place it in there, you'll be able to get it in there and separate the actual frame from the steering wheel. We finally got this off. So it really does not take that long. It probably took me about five minutes. What you really need to do is there's like tabs that you can see all around here. I don't know if the camera is going to focus. All these tabs, they look like anchors. They actually go into the rubber material of the steering wheel. So if you just pop them out slowly, start edge to edge, you'll get it all out and you shouldn't have any issue. The only thing you've got to be careful of is your paddle shifters have a small cable that comes out from the back and it's very short. So make sure you're not just yanking it off. Make sure you're taking it off slowly and then you've got to undo these white clips that go onto the back here um, and on the other side as well. So once we've taken that off, what we're going to need now is some torque bits. So what you're going to do with the torque bits, I believe it's a T20. Let's find out. It is in fact a T20. I'm just professional. What can I say? So what you're going to do is you're going to put these aside. You're going to get your T20s. You are going to remove a screw that I'm also going to show you on the inside here. I think it will all make sense when I show you guys the reverse. I know this is the worst how-to video, but please bear with me. I do really apologize for my lack of uh, videography and working at the same time. This is basically what the steering wheel looks like now. So everything's been removed. Um, you have a screw in here, screw on the other side, somewhere there where you can't really see it. Um, you got to do these two screws out and once you've undone them, that's the paddle shifts are going to be loose and that's the cable for the paddle shift that we were talking about. So now what we've got to do is we've got to remove that big nut looking thing. We've got to remove that, then the whole steering wheel is going to pop off and then it's just a reverse order of basically what we've done. So T55, we put that onto a breaker bar, just makes things easier. Hold your steering wheel. Now, which direction am I going? Other direction. So, uh, as you can see, this is out now. It has thread lock on it, the blue one. Um, we're going to put some more on there before we put it back in. So now, we've undone this. We put our tools aside so we can use them again in reverse order. And, voila! Steering wheel is out. So the paddle shifts literally, like if you look here, I'll do them. They will literally just slide out. So you just got to be very gentle with them just to not break anything. These are all things you're going to end up moving onto the new one anyway. So you have to take them off. So this video can also work as a paddle shift replacement video. That's how much shit you got to do to just change your paddle shift. I don't know why people do this anymore. As in car manufacturers, it is a pain, but that's what we're here for. So if you ever have these kind of jobs and you want us to get it done for you, just let us know. Another benefit of coming to Dub House is we do not need to keep your original steering wheel. Anyone who tells you they need to keep your original steering wheel is sending it to their supplier to basically strip it and get it done. But if you're as big as us, obviously in the industry, we don't need to do that because we just get a bunch of them and you get to keep yours. Some people just want to always go back to stock. Some people want to sell them. You do whatever you want with your own steering wheel. It's yours. You don't need to exchange it or anything like that. We'll put this one aside for now. And what we are doing is we are now going in reverse order. The first step is putting back your paddle shift. So they slide through. Make sure they are completely flush. And because these are handmade, sometimes some of the holes will have a little bit of glue, um, a little bit of epoxy. We usually check them before we send them out, but because we knew we were installing this one, 
Um, I didn't need to track it because I can fix it on the spot. So once you've put this back into place, you get your trusted screw. You're going to tighten it. Not too strong, but not too loose. Let that confuse you guys. All right, now for the second paddle shifter. So you can see here, there's a small hole that's gonna, whoops, that's gonna go through your steering wheel. Then you're gonna use your thing to tighten it again. Same order again, slide it through. It will sit very nicely. You, you, once you guys give this a shot yourself, you'll see it's really not that bad. Um, once it's tight, you have a look around, make sure everything is sitting flush. Everything is clicking, all the noises are still there. Um, excellent, excellent. So, reverse order. What you do is you just grab this, line it up to the hole, adjust it however many times you want to find the best sitting position for it. I'm just very, very, very OCD when it comes to this part. Well, there we go, sits flush now. So what you do is I'll just apply some thread lock onto here. All right, so we go back in reverse order. I don't know if it's really necessary to put the thread lock back on, but we do it anyways just in case because we tighten it, as Nathan said, to the German torque spec, which is good and tight. Um, so this goes back in. I'm gonna tighten this, tighten that. So now this is tight. Make sure there's no movement. Beautiful. What we need to do first is connect this back again. So this has two plugs that you need to make sure you put in there first. You should hear a click once you put it in. You can do this in any way that you feel comfortable, honestly. I personally prefer to just get this done from the top down when you've taken it off. It just makes it easier. You can do it from the top up. Doesn't really matter. Because it's an OEM steering wheel, everything just clicks into place so nicely. So it just sits as if it's OEM. Obviously this here is a little bit thicker, so you will need some sort of finesse to get it back in, but it's really not that bad. Um, but yeah, this is basically what it's gonna look like for now. Let me set it up again and let's put the airbag back in. So final step is to put back your OEM airbag. First, put this one back in onto the side here and that will just click right in. All right, so what happens now is we connected the black plug first and there's an yellow plug that you've got to click into place right here and click the blue tab. Line up your actual steering wheel. This part is, I'm not gonna jinx myself. It's honestly for me the worst part because you've gotta click the steering wheel in. Sometimes you click the steering wheel in and it's not clicked in 100%, which means you've gotta basically turn it back around, do all your stuff to pop it back out and attempt again and again and again until you get it right. Um, however, I've slowly learned that if you line it up right and apply equal pressure onto both sides and you'll hear a click like this. Now it's in, it is all good. Let me get out of the car because we've always got to start the car, make sure all your buttons work, your paddle shifts work, all that stuff. So give me two seconds. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the carbon fiber steering wheel installed on a Mark 7 GDI. So these are available on our website for all car makes and models. We've got Subaru, Toyota, fucking BMW, Mercedes, whatever, whatever you want. So you can customize them to the point where if you want this, because you know you're a special one, you want this cut completely so it looks like a Formula One car, we can do that for you. If you want to put a steering, like a, sorry, the LED strip at the top here to show your RPM and stuff, we can do that for you. Shapes, you want it round, you want a flat bottom, whatever you want, you just tell us and we'll do it for you. And now basically for the fun part is putting back your battery terminal on, so let me just get that done now. All right, so now we've connected the battery terminal again. We're just gonna cover this up as it was. So that's covered now. 
we start this and this video just goes black, give us a little prayer. We need to press the brakes on these cars. So obviously if you can't tell that I'm joking, we're, we've done these a hundred times, so I know how it goes every single fucking time. So what you will notice as well after you've done this is you've got a lot of errors on your dash. So what happens with these cars is when you disconnect the battery for say five minutes and connect it back again, you get every single code on the planet up on your dash, but all you gotta do is just literally take it out for a five second drive and everything will reset and then turn the car off, lock it, unlock it, turn it back on again, everything is gone. And that's basically it. So everything's finished on Jackson's car. We've put the steering wheel in for it. It looks pretty good. Honestly, I personally am a big fan. I wish I could do a cinematic for you guys, but you know, I'll attempt it now. So just go like this. We'll see what Zane manages to do with this footage. And yeah, that's how you install a carbon steering wheel on your Golf. So this applies to basically all of Audi, Golf, um, Volkswagens, they're all really very, very, very similar. It's the same thing. You're always gonna find the tabs on the back. You're always gonna have to remove it in the order that we've done. Basically, give it a crack yourselves. If you get stuck, we're always here. We can always do the installs for you. Just let us know. Um, we work with a lot of places around Australia. So if you're not in Sydney, we can also get someone to do it for you interstate worldwide you just got to figure it out yourself but there you go and thank you very much for watching today and 